Before we leave counting techniques behind, I thought I'd do one last final unifying example that just highlights some of the issues that come up in counting problems. Here's the problem. How many ways are there to select four billiard balls from a bag that contains 15 billiard balls, numbered 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 15? That question in and of itself is very poorly worded and vague because it turns out there are four problems embedded into that because it was not specified whether the billiard balls are being sampled with replacement or without replacement. Did they get returned to the bag after you pulled one out? So that's one thing that's vague. The other thing that's vague is does the order of the balls that are being sampled from the bag matter? Is that significant? So really what we have here is we have four different questions being asked in this rather vague um, notion up top here. So what I have here is a, a little two by two matrix to correspond to those four questions and on the rows I indicate whether or not we're talking about an ordered or an unordered sample and then for the columns I look at whether we're sampling from the bag without replacement or sampling from the bag with replacement. So let's start out over here and in this particular case that is when you have an ordered sample the order matters and you're sampling with replacement let's do one quick example I'll make up some numbers here how about pulling out an eight ball first replacing it in the bag and then a one ball and then maybe another eight ball and then another eight ball okay so that might be in many ways the easiest of the bunch and in that particular ordered sample by the multiplication rule we had 15 choices on that first draw since we return that ball to the bag we have 15 on the second draw and the third and the fourth so we have 15 to the fourth power and 15 to the fourth power turns out to be 50,625 is the answer to that particular question. Let's go to a second one and by the way notice that I put parentheses here and that's my way of ind indicating that order is important. Let's do that same thing here for this example where we're sampling without replacement but the order that you pull the balls out of the bag matters. So in this case an example might be maybe we get four the four ball and then remember we don't return that four ball to the bag we pull out another ball and maybe we pull out the three ball and then we pull out the eight ball and then we pull out the one ball. Well how many ways are there to do that particular sampling? Well there's 15 choices on the first draw followed by 14, 13, 12 and uh, that turns out to be 32,760. So not surprisingly a little bit lower than we had in this particular case. Now we come down to the case where the second row tells us we're looking at unordered samples and let's go ahead and do one. And by the way, this time I'll change the notation just a little bit and I'll put in uh, curly braces. So in the without replacement case, maybe on the first draw we pull out the one ball and that might be followed by the three ball and then the seven ball and then the five ball. Now remember in this case since it's an unordered sample if instead we had pulled one, seven, three, and five that would not be a different sample. So in this case it's pretty easy. There are 15 objects and we're choosing four of them and as the curly braces show the order does not matter so there are just 15 choose four different uh, ways of doing that and that turns out to be 1,300 and 65. So finally in the last case let's do a, a realization of this case as well. We have an unordered sample and we are sampling with replacement. So for example we could reach into the bag pull out the one and then we replace the one so we put the one back in and maybe on the second draw we get another one and on the next draw maybe a two, the two ball comes out and finally the four ball comes out. 
So that is our sample right there. 1, 1, 2, 4. And remember, if this had been 4, 1, 2, 1, that would not be a distinct sample. This one's a little bit trickier to think about than the other three. So let me down at the very bottom here. If you think in terms of 15 bins corresponding to the 15 balls, and then what you have is you have 14, uh oh, the pen's not working well, 14 dividers for a partitioning problem. Pen is really messing up. And you also have four balls. Let me show you a way of thinking of this particular problem. It is as follows. You could put two balls in here corresponding to the two ones and then put a divider in here. And then put another ball just to the left of the divider. That corresponds to the two. And then another divider and another and then another ball and that corresponds to the four and then at that point we put in three dividers already so we have 11 more left so let me put them in one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven delayed effect there all right so there are the eleven that right there would correspond to our sample of getting two ones one, two, no threes, a single four, then knows five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So that's the way you could put it in. And now we're doing it as a bit of a partition. Now, one way of thinking of this is as follows. What we're really doing is we have 18 objects. And what are those 18 objects? Well, they are the 14 dividers and the four balls. And it turns out there are four different places that we are choosing among those 18. And those are the four spots that we're choosing to put the balls. Now, by the way, you could do this as 18 choose 4, or you could do it as 18 choose 14, and you get the same number either way. But that's one way of thinking about this, the toughest of the four problems. And that turns out to be 3,060. One last thing before we leave this behind. It's not surprising that the ordered samples are, in both cases, larger than the unordered samples. And furthermore, it's not surprising that the, the numbers in this second column here are larger than the first column because when you put the billiard ball back in the bag, there are more different ways of doing things. So this concludes counting techniques. And at this point, we're going to go on to the last section here in chapter 3, which is set theory.